Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. And this is my 1972 or 1973 era Energizer Ever Ready flashlight. Steel body, push button on the side, it's got a D ring on the end so you can hang it up. And even though it's quite old, it still works. However, it didn't put out a whole lot of light. But when, when you're a kid and you buy a, your first flashlight, you aren't thinking about light output. You just want a flashlight. I estimate the output of this thing to be about 30 to 40 lumens. My Phoenix FD40 can put out 1,000 lumens. My Zebralight SC600 can go over 1,800. Even this little guy, my Zebralight H53, <laughs> way outperforms light output. Even a cheap $8 Defiant flashlight that I got at Home Depot for $8, and even the free flashlight that I got one time at Harbor Freight, you know those free ones they give away, this beats the pants off of this. You'll notice three trends in flashlights today. They're getting smaller, they're getting brighter, but they're also getting dimmer. Now, although all of these flashlights can outperform this old beast, these three flashlights have very low lumen output out possibilities. This one can go down to seven lumens. This one down to 0.15 lumens. And this one 0.01 lumens. Now you'd be wondering, why would anybody want a flashlight that dim? I mean, it's taken us 40 years to go from this to this. Why would you want to go back to this or even less than this light? Low lumen and even sublumen light levels do have a place. So let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a surgeon use a chainsaw? No, you see them use a scalpel. They use the right tool for the job. Same thing with flashlights. Yes, I may want to have a lot of throw. I may want to have a lot of light. I may want to have a very small compact flashlight. But low lumen and sublumen levels are still very, very valuable. For instance, how many of you have a nightlight for your kids? Those little four watt nightlight bulbs or an LED that just sits a plug in. Very, very low light. You don't need to light the whole house. You just need enough room or enough light to light your path, right? Keep from waking up your kids. That's what low lumen flashlights are good for. Uh, they're great for a nightlight. For small children or elderly, if you're staying in a hotel room and there isn't a lot of ambient light in the room, put one of your low lumen flashlights out and it'll run all night without a problem. It's more than more than enough to light up a, a complete room. My Zebra Light H53 goes down to 0 0.01 lumens, and after my eyes have dark adapted, this can get me easily around the house, even if there's no other light in the house. This can keep me going around the house. This keeps me from having to uh, use my toes to geolocate furniture, keeps my feet from having to uh, find the Legos on the floor. Uh, sometimes pets in the middle of the night will find a place to lay down and curl up right in the middle of your path. A low lumen flashlight will let you know that they're there. Also to avoid stepping in what little messes your pets leave you on the floor. It also helps you prevent loss of night vision. You know, you spend a lot of time in the dark building up that night vision. You don't want to lose that. It won't wake your campmates. In the middle of the night, you gotta take a bio break. You can just use a low lumen flashlight and just have enough light to get out of the tent and back in. You can ch check on sleeping children or sleeping elderly parents without waking them up and turning, you know, turning on that bright light on the, on the ceiling and, and waking them up and disturbing them. Other uses, you can read programs and such during plays and movies. If you get into a very dimly lit restaurant, you can whip out a small flashlight with low lumen levels and read the menu without disturbing the other patrons. Another long shot is, is in a tactical situation. You may be in a dark room or out at night and you're in a tactical situation where there's somebody out there in the dark that wants to cause you harm and you need a little bit of light to see, either to navigate or take a compass reading or maybe 
fix a malfunction on your firearm or what have you, you don't want a great big huge Hollywood spotlight giving away your position, a low lumen flashlight can do just that. Uh, maybe you need to take a compass reading, uh, something like that, without giving, a, giving away your position. And finally, there's the old standby duration. How long will your battery last? I've had this Zebra light for several months now, and I've been carrying it as an everyday carry flashlight for about four months. And let's see how many flashes I get between one and four after four months of just using this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I still get three flashes out of it. So that tells me it's about 60 to 70% charged up after four months of use. Now that doesn't mean I'm using 0.15 lumens all the time. I've usually got it around 100 or 200 lumens, which is more than enough for me to see with. But still, 0.15 lumens, I can easily use this to guide myself around the house at night without a problem. 0.15 lumens. And I can still do that with 0.1 lumens if my eyes are dark adapted. So having a battery that lasts a long, long time is a very, very big plus, as opposed to this, if you leave it on for just a couple hours, your batteries are dead. So this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Just letting you know that uh, when you go to research flashlights, maybe some low lumen light levels would be a very advantageous thing. So be safe out there and I'll see you out on the trail.